Good morning, everyone. This morning, I'm going to be doing another Touch IC replacement on an iPhone 6 Plus. I never have a day anymore where I get to get through the whole entire day without doing at least one of these. Um, and in many cases, I, I'm winding up doing, gosh, I don't know, the other day I did, I, I had six to do, but I only got through five of them with all the other stuff I had going on. So, um, it is a really, really big problem. Let me see. I got a little bit of a different camel, camera angle here today. I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, if you don't want to see the teardown portion of this, where I pull the logic board out, just go ahead and skip forward. I'll most likely put an index in the description. Um, I've got a couple of these videos online now doing this exact repair, but... Um, one thing about me, I got a lot, a lot more steady hands whenever I'm not doing it on camera. So um, I don't really like the way those videos turned out, sitting those chips back on and stuff. Because you know I've did, uh, I bet, I don't know, six or eight of these since the last time I did a video on it, and um, pretty well every last one of them turns out better than the one on the video. But that's okay. They're going out of here working. Um, I do have a return once in a while. Um, in the past few weeks, I've had two come back. Was a, uh, a nice gentleman down in Arkansas. That phone's actually came back twice, and I still have it here. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with that one, but um, I'm giving it another shot today. Hoping I can give this guy some good news. Um, oops. So the other one that came back, no matter what touch ICs were changed, and no matter what you did, this phone always has somewhat of a, a finicky touch issue. It, it's really weird. Once in a great while, after I'm all done with it now, once in a great while, the touch screen would still quit working. And you could trigger that by bending the phone really hard. So that phone, I wound up doing the iPad rehab, the Minden iPad rehab uh, future shield on it. and fixed it that it hasn't came back so either they're tired of bringing it back or you know it did only come back once but um, or it's fixed I'm, I'm pretty sure it is fixed because after I did that I wasn't able to get it to mess up no matter how hard I bent the phone all right try not to do anything silly here today since I'm recording a video you know I'm going to be doing dumb dumb stuff I should be able to work interruption free on this one. I'm going to try to get through this really quick because I got a lot of other stuff going on today. Data recovery stuff and the jobs that are tough are the ones, the rabbit hole jobs where you just you don't know where the finish line is. You don't you don't know. You might work on it for two more hours or you might work on it for two more days. And water damage data recovery, <laughs> it often turns out like that. All right, let's go ahead and take out these little dudes. So, always be really careful how hard you're pushing on these, especially if you're like most of the rest of the world using a flathead, because your flathead can slip and gouge some of the small stuff beside it, and that's that's a miserable day because then you got to fix it. I'm going to hit all my Phillips screws. I've got the focus on this camera right now that's on my hands. Um, that's somewhat of a... It's not on autofocus. I pretty well set it in one spot and left it there. So I don't know how in focus this is going to wind up being. Um, I'm going to try to get better at this content creation stuff, but it's extremely difficult throughout the course of the day to figure out ways to record this and get the work done at the same time. So anytime I'm, well, most anytime I'm recording a video, it has to be of a real world repair because I don't have time to set anything else up for 
just like the sake of recording, it, it has to be something that needs done or I don't have time to do it. You know, that could change someday in the future, but I doubt it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and remove this little sticker backing that I always seem to always forget to remove. that now do we? Okay. I'm going to pop our antenna cable off although I've never had any problems melt, melting this little dude I move it just in case I don't know why I never thought about applying heat to the board to take this back sticker off. I want to thank iPad Rehab, Jessa Jones with iPad Rehab for that little trick. I did it to the first one yesterday and talk about cool. It actually peels off without any sticker residue. You know, I use heat for everything. iPhone screen replacements, you know, the home buttons, the top flex. Um, charge port replacements on iPhones, Galaxy phones. I use heat constantly to get the adhesive to break free easily and I just I really didn't think about it on this sticker and you know since I'm bragging about it this one kinda came off like crap but I understand the last one I did turned out awesome so alright well without skipping the beat here I've already got the air set on 380C Now this phone is the classic gray bars and no touch unless you get it at just the right angle problem, which I firmly believe rarely, I mean rarely, rarely, rarely has anything to do with the Cumulus IC. So I believe those of you that are replacing Mason and Cumulus no matter what, um, I think you're wasting a lot of time. Uh, I, I hardly ever have one of these repairs come back. The Mason IC is to blame 99.9% .9 of the time, and I think whenever a repair does come back, um, it's due to bendage, a defective IC, could be Cumulus or Mason, you know, who knows. Um, but I believe that there is something else really, really weird about the iPhone 6 Plus board and the way this problem can resurface once in a while. Why don't it happen to the iPhone 6? It's the same components. It's really bizarre. It's almost like there's two layers of the board or something that or they're getting some sort of a inductive coupling. Um, there's something, there's some really weird shit going on with this defect. It's not just as simple as, oh, change the chip. There's something that's happening during the replacement of these chips. There's something else at play here that has more to do with bending and the chip. But correcting the issue with bending is enough to get rid of it as well. So the Future Shield that iPad Rehab is using, it, it works. Um, the phones that I have put that on, um, you know, they, they don't come back. So it, an example, I've had two returns on this repair in the past, I don't know, few weeks, like I said. Um, one of those, uh, I didn't do anything to it other than put the future shield on it because I couldn't get it to mess up. This phone would only mess up once in a blue moon and, you know, it had a tight case on it. But whenever I would take and really give the phone hell, I could get the touch screen to quit and you lock the screen, unlock it, and then it was fine and worked flawlessly. So on that phone, rather than doing anything to it and changing chips, and you know, might as well put on a fucking blindfold and just replace these chips every time something goes wrong. There's more to it than this. So um, anyways, on that phone, since it would only mess up once in a blue moon, all I did was uh, I, I, you know, I cut a shield to fit out of a bigger shield and soldered it on the board nice and neat, and the phone has never came back. It, it fixed it. So um, I sort of lost my train of thought there. But anyways, I think there's a lot more to it on the 6 Plus 
the future shield is preventing it from resurfacing. So maybe a combination of bendage and the way the the way the layers of the border put together. I, shit, I don't know. Um, I know what it's taken to fix it. So let me see if I can get how well I can get this centered. I might cut some of this camera screwing around with out altogether. Where am I at? That's probably not too bad. Okay. Let's switch over and make that our main one. I will upgrade this before long, but as it is right now, I have to put, make our main focus on um, on repairs. Okay, so I'm probably going to leave it right there. Okay, we're going to start heating this board up a little bit here. And I apologize, I know that image quality sucks, but if you are doing this repair, I think the only reason you might be watching my video is to see how long I hold the hot air on there and get a rough idea of how I do this. I, I really doubt you're down trying to look at the teeny tiny little aspects of this if you're doing this repair you're most likely skipping past big huge chunks of this video so all right we got the board heated up i'm getting a little bubbling out of the flux and give that heat time to spread and i'm going to move on in for the kill here i noticed in my videos it actually looks like i'm pulling on these chips i'm not i'm really just kind of bumping them and the board it's not moving up, it's moving down when I touch it. It'll probably be the same in this video as well. Alright, I see some of the adjacent components starting to melt. This touch I see should start moving any minute. There's a tiny bit of movement. I'm going to lift it off there nice and easy. Alright, so the IC is removed. I'm going to leave my hot air running here for a minute because I've actually started using it for uh, tinning the pads. So, I'm going to add a tiny layer of flux to my pads. There we go. Wait for the hacko to heat up. I'm actually going to be holding the temperature of the board up a little bit while I tin these. I don't do this every time, but I feel like this is um, making things a little easier on the, uh, the junction between the pad and the board. A little jittery here today. It's because I'm on the camera. When I'm not recording this, things are much more calm. It's still hot. I'm gonna to switch to where I can help stabilize my hand. I don't want to. I don't want to have to sit here and fix a bunch of mess ups this morning. I just want to get this done and move on. So I, this is a very routine repair. And uh, it really sucks to mess it up and make it take longer than it should. All right, now as easy as I've touched this. The uh, corner ground has came loose, and I didn't even touch the pad. All I did was brushed it with a solder ball. So, you know, I'm really starting to think that there's more to this um, as easy as some of these pads come off. Because I know I didn't touch the board, and it just like, you know, it, it floated away. Don't really know why. I know I didn't fucking touch it. It's like they're inherently weak. So I don't know. You know, if it was me looking at somebody else's work, I'd say, hey, they tore the pad. So I can't really say, I didn't tear that pad. You know, I took the chip off of it. The pad is now gone. I know I tore the pad. So let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to show you a close up view from this little handheld microscope that I got. 
been at this 20 minutes now. Now the pad that I've got missing here, I have inspected, I've checked the uh, IC, it's a ground pad. And what I've done is I've, uh, I've checked the IC itself for continuity between that pin and the ground pin next to it, and I came up with no connection. Which tells me, you know, I got one pad here that's high. I'm going to have to put a little flux on it and pull solder away from it. Um, so anyway, I checked continuity with this missing pin, pad, on the chip between its pin and the uh, the ground pin next to it, and I came up with nothing. So, okay, so it's our portable microscope. Here's what this looks like, and here's our missing missing pad up here in the corner. And it's a ground pad. I mean, maybe I can get away without it, but I really don't want to chance it and put a chip on here and have to throw one away, especially since I'm low on them. Um, I'm down to my last few uh, Texas Instruments chips for this repair, so. I don't want to have to put two on here, and I definitely don't feel like reballing anything. If I'm reballing something, something has went terribly, horribly wrong. Where is my little? I'm missing the tool because I'm doing a video. All right, so let's make us a spot here. You know what? I've never done this before, but I'm tempted just to put a wire between those two balls. I wonder if I could get away with that. Now that's worth trying. That would save me a lot of time. Would it be any less stable? Nah. No, nothing new today. Let's just do this. Okay, a little scratch on the board. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll show you it. I put a little scratch right by our missing pad there. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, since this anchor or this jumper is gonna be like right in our ground plane, you know what? I had a high ball over here. I'm going to go ahead and flux it and grab it while I'm doing this. Um, so anyway, this anchor is part of the ground plane, so it, it takes where I'm putting this jumper. It takes a lot, I mean a lot of heat. Alright, I got a little bit of a tinnage on there. This is turning into a miserable fucking video. Because now we're doing those same two jumpers again. Oh, the miserable hell. I hope this isn't a sign of how things are going to go today. Yeah, let's do a 
Let's do a quick touch IC video. And put all these other fucking jumpers in there while you're at it. Ah. This is going to be a long day, guys. Get me closer. All right, micro pencil. I do love this tool. Alright, pads are 10 for my jumper. Let me grab a shield here that I'm going to use to prep me up some jumper wire. We're going to use vibrator motor wire today. I don't know why I do this on a metal shield. So now I have some enamel coated magnet wire. This is what I'm going to use for these two jumpers. I can't believe I'm running two jumpers on this. It's supposed to be an easy one. breath. Let's go to town on this thing. STS, this is Jason. May I help you? Okay, where was I? Oh, yes, I was getting ready to get pissed off at this. Time for some new tweezers.
It's just marvelous. I hate running micro jumpers. All right, let's zoom in. Zoom and make a cut. That actually turned out pretty good. Okay. Now, that's giving a beat. I'm going to spin the board around and do this little ground jumper. Yeah, you know, I might be able to get away with leaving that ground jumper out, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll test it. I'll, I'll yank an IC off of one of these phones and I'll intentionally tear that pad off just to see if the touch screen will still work without it. Well, it's not the best in the world, but we'll take it. Yeah. Why not? Same pair of jumpers. My ground jumper don't look too great there, but I got tired of making it, trying to make it look good. And I'm moving toward making it electrically functional. Okay, we should be okay there because that is actually going to refloat. Now, I thought I had a ball out here to deal with that was high. Hmm. 
Turn the hackle back down. I'll never forget when I first started doing micro BGA rework. The sight of a pad missing was like a little miniature heart attack every time. It was like, <gasps> but now I see a missing pad and it's just like, ah, damn it. As long as it's something that I can get to, I can even run jumpers to some of these that are up under the chip, depending on what sort of a trace I've got to anchor to. If I've got a long enough trace to anchor a jumper to, I can put a jumper under this. Like way under it, but who wants to do that? That would really suck. Alright, let's drop a chip on this thing, see if I can get some touch screen. You know what? just occurred to me I didn't. I started this job and never showed you that this phone was actually messed up. I'm not uh, I'm not too concerned about people thinking that the shit's not really fixed. So if I do one of these videos and don't show that it actually works and I'm done with it, I don't really care what people think. Um, <laughs> You little bastard. Tweezers are a little sticky. Alright, spin this dude around. That's how it's going to sit. Just like that. Start heating this board up. camera angle. Alright. Let's start heating this board up. Flux. 
This tacky fucks that I'm using ain't very damn tacky. Maybe I'm not using it right. Yeah, let's see what happens. Add a little more flux. I'm a little far on the hot air on that one because of the, the ground plane on the other side of this chip. Um, I wanted to make sure that little micro jumper that I sat in place on top of that ground plane would, would float. So hopefully it did. I'm, I'm not sure if it did or not. So, let's see how our chip looks. Did we drop? We're nice and flat across there. Not as low as I would like to see it. Let's see if it did actually drop. Ooh, pretty good looking balls. All right. Oh yeah, we're definitely not heating this back up. This looks good. Okay, I'm going to have a look at my micro jumper side. Ooh, I just realized how crappy that camera looks when all this is going down. Hmm, sorry. Might as well go like this because this looks like shit. All right. Oh yeah, these jumpers actually look really good. I'd be surprised if this don't work. Um, I guess for the sake of this video, this is the corner I did the jumpers on. There are two of them there. You can really only see the one. And it looks like crap in this microscope. looks really good in the big one. But it's just, it's a really, really robust connection there at that ground. And the other pin's nice and solid too. So let's, let's test the pump. Grab a housing. Put this view here. Okay. It's always nice seeing an Apple logo after a repair like that. Give a little push on the board here. No white bars so far, that's a good sign. Yeah, this was supposed to be quick and easy this morning. Plan on just, you know, one of these days I'm going to do a 20 minute touch IC video. Anytime. Our ambient light sensor is working. We have working touch screen.
Now, once in a while, I will do a touch IC job where I replace Cumulus and Mason just right off the bat. But seriously, you know, when it comes to troubleshooting, um, oh, go back to that view again. This has nothing to do with the job I just did on it. Um, sometimes that crap will happen after a screen replacement too. It's more just like about the screen refreshing. So um, this one works great. Now I still got to check the other sensors and stuff, but I don't have this customer's passcode handy. So um, I'm going to be doing that off camera, but I hardly ever have a, a secondary defect as a result of doing this touch IC job. So um, I hardly ever dig in and do Mason and Cumulus ICs. And, you know, a lot of this and a lot of being successful with this, it comes down to critical thinking. And critical thinking tells me not to replace both of those chips no matter what. Um, there's a lot that can happen during a chip replacement. You can bump things off the board, hats can get torn, and there's just a really a, a lot that can go wrong. Not to mention, once the, once the chip's put on there, you have to worry about each individual solder joint underneath the chip. So to replace a whole extra chip just because, maybe it makes, I'm not gonna go into all that, but to replace a whole extra chip that's not bad to start with, it really opens, just opens up this huge door to put potential failure. And it's, it's really not necessary. Nine times out of 10, replacing the Mason IC is going to fix this. So um, this is another successful iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC replacement. This one involved micro jumpers. Sometimes I feel like those pads, they, they come off the board so very easy that there had to have been a micro tear there to start with, you know. But, you know, if I was opening up this phone, Another tech had worked on it and failed at getting the touch IC to work and I opened it and seen missing pads, I'd say, oh, well, that douchebag tore pads. Um, so, you know, I can blame the phone all I want, but the reality is I took the chip off of it. There were missing pads after I removed the chip. So you know, it's kind of hard to deny I'm the one that tore the pads. But um, anytime stuff like that happens, I fix it. This is going to be a good working phone. I would be very surprised if there are any secondary defects as a result of replacing the chips. Um, this customer, he's a local customer. He lives here in Farmington. I will most likely, when he when he comes to get the phone, I'm just going to have him unlock it and, and test a few things, and I'm pretty confident there's not going to be any other trouble. So this was supposed to be a 20-minute Touch IC video because sometimes I do them in 20 minutes, not counting ultrasonic cleaning time. But, um, no, of course, since I'm on camera, I wound up running micro jumpers. So... That's it for this morning, everybody. I don't know if I'll do any more videos today. I'm I'm way too backed up, and it takes time to sit here and talk and show each step. So um, that's it for now. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, everybody.